In this intro to AutoCAD architecture, I want to go over some of the differences between regular AutoCAD, also commonly known as vanilla AutoCAD, and this particular flavor of AutoCAD, uh, which basically takes AutoCAD and adds uh, specific tools for architects on top of all the regular tools that are included in regular AutoCAD. So many architecture firms, interior design companies, and other similar companies use AutoCAD architecture because it has tools specifically designed for building design. So it makes it a lot more efficient for building drafting and building design as opposed to regular AutoCAD. When you think about AutoCAD in general, it's really kind of the jack of all trades and the master of none, meaning it's not really um, great at building design. It's not really great at product design compared to some other software. So in order to kind of improve its abilities for designing and drafting buildings, they created what was known as Architectural Desktop, and that has since been renamed uh, into AutoCAD Architecture in order to be clear about how it belongs in the AutoCAD family. So this is AutoCAD Architecture 2011. Uh, it will behave exactly like AutoCAD, and everything that you do in AutoCAD will work here. This includes additional tools and uh, some additional abilities. So when I go through the AutoCAD architecture videos, I will assume that you already are familiar with using AutoCAD in general, the van vanilla regular AutoCAD, and uh, kind of pick up from that by showing the additional new tools that are included in AutoCAD architecture. So the first couple of things that I'll point out is that there are some differences in the ribbon. For example, on the home tab of the ribbon, you have a build panel, and this includes architectural components, walls, doors, windows, etc. You might hear those referred to as AEC objects or AEC tools. So AEC stands for Architecture, Engineering, and Construction Industry. So I might use that term from time to time. And uh, if you hear that, that's what it's talking about. So these are intelligent objects um, that um, will be easier to use in the sense of you're drawing building parts. So rather than drawing two lines to represent a wall, and then a hatch pattern to represent the hatch in the center of the wall. They're non-intelligent, right? So if you modify them, like you move a door, then you have to fix the lines, fix the hatch, etc. As opposed to these, which understand that there are building components. So if you move the door, then the wall will update itself automatically. And that's kind of the point. Now, the other thing that's going to be significantly different is the tool palettes. And you can start the tool palettes from the icon right there on the ribbon or you can use the shortcut, which is TP for tool palettes. So once you have your tool palettes open, uh, the behavior of the palette in general works the same as the tool palettes in AutoCAD. But you'll notice that there are different tabs. And in this case, there are so many tabs that they provide groups to sort the tabs. So if you click on the properties button, the third one down on the bar on the side of the palette, assuming your palette's not docked, then it will fly out with your properties and then at the bottom you have categories design document detailing visualization and all palettes so if you're in the document documentation phase of a project you can go there and then get to some tools for documenting and then if you're going to the design phase of a project you can go to that category and then the tabs will switch over to give you the design tools walls and doors and things like that so that's an important difference in how the tool palettes will work. Now, you can use the generic wall tool here on the tool palette, or you can use the generic wall tool on the build panel of the ribbon, and they'll do pretty much the same thing. The difference is that there are palette tabs specifically for walls, doors, windows, spaces, FF and E, and massing that are going to be a little bit more specific. So when you go to the Walls tab, for example, there are specific tools uh, that are designed for uh, specific construction materials, like a block wall versus a brick wall versus a stud wall. And we'll get into that a lot more in my next couple of videos about using wall, door, and window tools. Just kind of wanted to show an overview here. A couple of other things that are important to keep in mind in AutoCAD architecture. Um, you have a cut plane that is specifically set and so it's taking, uh, when you are in a floor plan view, like a top view, it's taking a horizontal section at that height that's shown there, three foot six, above the floor plan, uh, floor plan level of zero. 
So when you draw with your smart objects, like walls, doors, and windows, you're drawing three-dimensional objects. And then when you're in the plan view, you're getting a, a plan view shown at the three foot six cut plane above the uh, zero height in your Z direction. And uh, I'll get into that more a little later as well. And the last thing that's kind of a major difference is the display configurations, which are a button right there next to your cut plane. And this allows you to customize what the view is uh, while you're either in a specific viewport or while you're working in model space. So if you're working on a floor plan, you might leave that in medium detail. And then if you go to work on a ceiling plan, you can change that to reflected. And then uh, any and then any intelligent objects like walls, doors, ceiling uh, grids will change their view because they understand that you want to see a reflected ceiling plan view when you change the display configuration. So the intelligent objects um, can be controlled by layers in terms of visibility and their graphics and visibility can be controlled also by the display configuration. So the display configurations are very flexible and powerful. They allow you to um, even cut different cut plane heights. So maybe you're working on a multi-story building and you have it all modeled three-dimensionally. You can have a first floor display configuration, second floor and a third floor, for example, so that you could switch back and forth very quickly between seeing the different levels of the building in a plan view. So and that is a uh, important distinction with AutoCAD architecture as well. Uh, there are some other uh, some minor changes in the location of tools in the ribbon, but it's usually pretty easy to figure out if you look through your tabs um, and where everything falls is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, keep in mind, uh, like I went, when I went over the ribbon in regular AutoCAD, you can always turn your tabs on and off by right-clicking anywhere in the ribbon and then going to tabs and seeing what's checked or unchecked. And if you're having trouble finding something, you might see if there are some of the tabs that are turned off or some of the panels that are turned off. And uh, just like in AutoCAD, all this is customizable as well.